Hello, and welcome once again to Helium Hacks Happy Hour. My name is Travis. I go by TT over on the Discord, and um, glad to have everyone here this afternoon. So, uh, we got a cool show for you. Um, we got the team from Hotspotty with us. It's going to go over uh, some of the cool new functionality. Um, I know some of you have seen them on the program before, and um, they've got a lot of changes. They gave me a little sneak peek of um, some of it, and I think they're going to give us a walkthrough. So um, I guess uh, to get this out of the way, there was a lot of news um, come out today uh, about Helium. Uh, I think that that's kind of been discussed in the discords and on the stages and whatnot. So um, don't really want to, you know, we can get into it later after the presentation, but you know, that's what we're here for uh, tonight. So I'd really like to um, introduce these folks. Um, if anyone here doesn't know them, um, as far as uh, this show, I just, if, if this is your first time on the call, it's very casual. And so, um, you know, if you have something to say, unmute your mic, um, turn on your video camera. We want to see your pretty faces and um, talk to us. Introduce yourself to the developer community here. And um, what I do ask, though, if you have OBS and you don't have a video camera, uh, just turn that off so we don't have a big OBS block, um, you know, up on, up on the screen. But um, otherwise, yeah. Um, if there's anything you want to talk about as far as development is concerned, um, you know, writing firmware, uh, messing around with end nodes and sensors, uh, that's kind of what we do on this call. So uh, people are still kind of rolling in here, but um, I'll tell you what, I do want to kind of get started. I want to uh, respect everyone's time here. So uh, Daniel, um, can I kind of pass the mic over to you and you introduce uh, your team and uh, kind of tell us uh, what you're doing, man. Yeah, of course, man. Thanks, Travis. Uh, it's always happy to be back on the show. I think it's like our third or fourth time here since last year. Uh, it's always a blast. So my name is Daniel. I am the CTO of Hotspotty. Uh, here we have like a, a small crew of our team. It's me, Max and Alexis uh, with three co-founders of the project. And then we have Rafaela as well on the other side of the screen, our sales uh, genius as long with Sierra as well. Um, need to get you with the background. Uh, and yeah, we've been working on Hotspot for over since the end of 2020 uh, and released the, the, let's say a beta version on August last year. And since then we've been working pretty much seven days a week as much as we could until um, we got to the point that we would be able to start um, <clears throat> providing a lot of more features and, and utility to the network. I think every, every month we try to add a new feature. Uh, sometimes it takes longer because the features are pretty massive. And yeah, that's why we're here today to show a few of the features that we launched and, and the ones that we're working on is gonna be released pretty soon in the next uh, few days to a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, I think um, there's a quick intro to Hotspotty. If you guys don't know yet, I guess I, I would imagine that most people here already know us. Uh, we do pretty much everything that you want on the Helium network in terms of managing, planning, assessing locations, etc. with their hotspots. And yeah, I mean, we have a, a few things we want to talk about, new projects, a new feature set that we launched. Uh, I guess we're going to start talking about the commissions. Uh, like the payments and the commission management that we, re we released a few weeks ago, that was like a pretty big milestone for us. We started, uh, we launched on August, being able to track and pay people in AGT. Uh, but then we know that just like that's a small, that's, I would say that's a majority of people, but that there are so many different use cases in terms of paying your hosts that we spend a lot of time working and trying to accomplish uh, as much as we could in this. I mean, we still have things you want to add in the future, but right now, for example, you can pay people in different fiat. You can record payments and download SV files for PayPal, Wise. Uh, you can do like payments in Venmo, you know, like Cash App and and any other um, any other thing. But I don't know if like um, should we just give a quick demo, Max, of the commissions? What do you think? Um, yeah, we can do that. We can just like, I was thinking running 
do like maybe three quick examples of uh, different payment methods. Like for example, paying people in fiat in a percentage, a fixed amount per month. And also just showing around a, a, a little bit about the new commission system. What do you think? Yeah, okay, sounds good. Uh, let me share my screen. <laughs> you are the share master, so. <laughs> right, here we are. So uh, can everybody see it? <laughs> I suppose yes. Yeah, so we this is just like to let you know that this is the our staging server. That's where we test new features uh, on like a live production environment. Uh, but yeah, we can use that just quick intro. Yeah. So um, okay. So basically, I'm just gonna go to the workspace because this is where all your data lives and where you will basically be managing your wallets, your hotspots, any locations, contacts, installs, all the way up to commission reports and paying your hosts. Um, so what we could do is we can just go to the map and select like a random hotspot. And basically this one has one hotspot. So we can just add the wallet to automatically track the hotspot. And um, I was hoping this one would have a bit more hotspot. This one has seven hotspots. So let's add that as well. Yep. And then we can basically pretend that th these are our hotspots and we can assign hosts to that. So now going back to the workspace, the dashboard gives you an overview of basically your earnings, some attention lists, um, et cetera, based on these hotspots. Then you have the wallets here, um, which you can label and you can manage. You can see all of the payment transactions that happened for this, uh, from and to these wallets. And you have the hotspots. I'm just going to refresh because it's it's still adding the hotspots. So here they are. You can um, see a bunch of information here by just editing the columns and just clicking on the ones you're interested in. They will automatically appear. Um, and then the locations are essentially for planning purposes. So um, locations represent physical addresses where you have access to through your host, uh, most likely. So you have some hotspots that you want to, um, to deploy. Essentially, you're going to find the ultimate location that you have access to. And in the case that that person that is actually granting the access to, uh, to that location, you can construct agreements uh, all, like, all along through contacts and installs to eventually pay them um, a profit share or some fixed amount in whatever currency that you choose. Uh, but it starts with, um, you know, these base, basic uh, items, and then eventually you uh, reach to this point. So what we can do here, we can, uh, for example, add an install for this um, hotspot. For that, you need a location, but we have a utility function, assuming you already have installed them in the past. So we can click here to add a location with the same coordinates of this hotspot. So let's do it like this. We just save it. Um, and let's say that we installed it um, whenever, like the 9th of November. What you can do here is we can add commissions. Um, if you click here, you can use commission templates. And these are basically predefined templates of uh, whatever commission agreements you uh, use in, on multiple um, occasions. Uh, you can uh, update these in the settings and you can be very flexible. You can give it a name, etc. So for now, let's just add a custom one. Um, in this case, you need a contact. So let's create one for John. Um, you don't really have to fill in all of this information, but you can. So let's save John. And um, this is basically how we started off being, uh, there was one uh, type, which is percentage of rewards. And there was one currency. What you can do now is you have um, three different options in the type, which is percentage of the rewards, recurring fixed amount. So um, let's say every month you want to give whatever, a certain amount in whatever currency you choose to this host for actually hosting uh, this hotspot or even for installing. Let's say that you want to, you have a bunch of hotspots, but you have one person who is installing them for you. You don't necessarily want to give them a uh, piece of the recurring revenue coming from the hotspot, but you could give them a one-time fixed amount, which could also be uh, you know, in a template 
as a installer fee or something. And then you just click, you assign the contact and done. Um, so in this case, percentage of reward. So let's just say that we give like whatever, 6% or whatever, let's do 25%. And the start date, um, we should ideally put it the same as it was. Yeah, 9th of November. Um, but yeah, you can choose this as well. And then end date is when this uh, agreement stops. So let's just save this. And let's also add a one-time fee um, or actually just a monthly fixed amount. And we can do that in another currency. Let's just use the dollar uh, for that. Let's just put like $15 um, also starting the same date. And we have to assign this to a person. This could be John, but we can just add an, another one like Jane, for example, safe. All right. Let's save this um, percentage of reward because I added the contact, it kind of reset the form. So I can just, um, no, not percentage of reward. I think we might have found a bug. Yeah, this is typical. If you do a live demo, you find bugs, right? <laughs> Occurring fixed amounts. Let's do dollars and we put $15 safe. Safe. All right, so now there's one active install. If now you go to the install and you, for example, say that you uninstall the hotspot, let's say that the host no longer wants to host it, then this will um, you know, no longer show as active install. This would be a past install. You can add a couple of more. Um, let's just do one more. Um, so location, let's add a new, the same one, this one, installed. Um, yeah, doesn't really matter. Commissions, let's do a one-time fixed amount. And let's also do US dollar, say like whatever, $31. And let's put it in um, December. Right. December, it doesn't make a lot of sense based on the installation date, but anyway. Let's assume this is the case. And we you never know that maybe you yeah. went to fix something, you broke something in the guy's house that you need to change the like pay for the vase that you broke when you're installing. You never know what happened. Yeah, good point, good point. And then you can see it here, um, the, the explanation of the agreement you have. So in this case, we chose to do it on an off, another date than the install date, which you know can happen if you change this uh, fields after already um adding this so this is just like a confirmation that you have to agree just to prevent some confusion in, in the future um, this also automatically assigns the labels um, which are essentially links to these contacts that have uh, commission agreements with the relative uh, with the related um, um, hotspot installation so if we click on john for example john does really look like john but anyway, um, being here, you can basically see all of the information, including its contact payment methods. There are two installs, which are current. Um, they have um, you know, these same um, labels. There's an installation date. And then there's the commissions as well, which uh, sums up all the agreements. And then here is basically where you can track payments, where you can say, OK, I paid this person that amount at that point in time. And then some comments, which is to internally keep track of whatever you know, happened with this, with this contact. Um, and all of your team members within the uh, workspace uh, have access to this. Uh, but John doesn't, right? So we are also working on a host dashboard, which essentially will give all of this uh, information um, to the um, to the actual contact, and they will be able to log in in that platform, uh, not through Discord, but just simply by entering their email address if they have one. So if now we go to the contact and we say john at do.com, then in the host dashboard, they will just be able to log in with john at do.com. They get an email with a code. If they enter it, they will be able to see all of the data that relates to them, um, but of course not any data relating to other people um all right so wait and then here you can add payment methods as well 
Um, but let's skip that for now. So what we can do now is we can you know, confirm that these locations were added here, um, the contacts were added here, the installs were added here, and then in the commission report, which is basically what users uh, usually will do once a month, for example, is uh, to generate a report that will um, give you an overview of exactly who you owe what amount for which currency. So if right now we have two different uh, currencies that we used in the commission agreements, just dollar and H&T. So essentially we will create two commission reports, one for each uh, currency. The reason for that is that we have um, uh, provided means to pay these people uh, that depends on the currency to basically make it a smoother experience. So when you create a, um, a report, you can give it a name, can uh, select the start and end date. Um, this automatically selects the previous month. Month in this case, it's February. So if we use February, then um, in this case, it will not include the one time payment because that was in December. Um, it will only include the recurring ones. So we can do that just for sake of checking it out. Uh, also the currency, you can choose for which one you actually want to generate, but if you don't do anything, it will generate for all of the ones. So there might be, you know, in this case, um, a report that does not have any value. Like right now it's still processing. So it will automatically fetch the results uh, and show them here. Um, also, yeah. uh, when you generate the report, it's only going to show the currencies that you have installs configured. So if you add another install in, I don't know, Canadian dollars, and then when you generate the report, it's going to show the, the Canadian dollar as well there, just to not generate. So here, yeah. 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 So they're, uh, they're finished. Uh, in this case, we have H&T and, and USD. Uh, we can start with h &T because that's what people already knew before. So just gives you a high level overview of how many contacts um, you know, that have not been paid, uh, that need to be paid, how many that need um, you know, uh, wallets to be added in order to, to track the payments. In this case, this shows the default payment methods. For each contact, you can select um, plenty of um, payment methods. Uh, but for each currency, you basically have to select the default one. And that's the default one that will be visible here. That will also be used for constructing the, the payment, uh, um, actual like the payment things that you will see here. So in this case, it doesn't have a payment method yet. So we can just, we can, yeah, maybe let me go back. So here for each one of the contacts, uh, you can open the details and you will see the total amount owed based on um, this uh, time period. The contact, you can click true on that. And then there's, uh, in this case, one install where he has 25% of the earnings. And then you can click here, which is essentially all of the commissions of the individual hotspot earnings uh, that make up this amount. And then you can add a payment method. Um, the fact that this doesn't include uh, any contact that you don't have payment methods allows you to individually track the ones that are paid and, and are not like versus not paid based on the data that's missing. So um, let's just add a payment method. Um, actually, let's just go to the map and select like a random uh, wallet address. So we can give John a payment method. So in this case, uh, add payment method. You can give it a name, a currency, etc. In case of H and T, there's only one option: the wallet address. Um, you just paste it here. If you start removing, like basically, if this is not valid, it will not allow you to to save this. Um, so let's do that. And here you can select if it should be the default one for H and T. So let's save this. Now it shows up here. You can add other ones. So let's say for um, like dollars. Uh, you want to save uh, whatever PayPal, which you can put this email address, uh, for example, and that would be the default for USD. But if then you add another one also for USD, 
which can be cash app, like whatever dollar John, then you can just uncheck this so that by default, it will always be PayPal. Um, and also here is the status. So this is basically, this reflects the payment status and we don't actually execute payments for you. We just give you the means to do it in a very easy way. Uh, but then it's up to you to track it, to basically mark it as paid. So let's go over that. In this case, um, there's two options. One is uh, using the QR code payment. One is uh, the CLI payment. That's more for like power users. The QR code payment is essentially just a QR code that you scan with the Helium wallet. And then that's, that's basically it. Uh, you will execute the payments. We actually track um, if these payments went through. And if it happens, then it will be paid automatically. However, um, you, we still recommend you to click on mark as paid because what that will do is it will uh, create a record that if John now goes to his you know, dashboard, he will see that this, uh, this payment was done. And here from your perspective, you can see that it was paid in, as a QR code with this commission report can click here and you can see a bit more details. You can see where it came from. Um, and yeah, and you can click through and you're back where, where we were started, starting off. So you can filter. Um, so if you have a lot of hosts, uh, you can uh, just add more you know, to the pagination, more records if you want to see all of them. But you can also fil filter by text or basically the ones that are paid or not paid. Um, and now if you want to pay again, like for this, uh, like these people, in this case, just one, you can't because basically you already paid this person. So this is to prevent you from uh, executing duplicate payments and we show you like the errors basically. So also, for example, if you have multiple people with the same wallet address, it will also like remove one of them out of it. So you don't construct QR codes with two of the same wallet addresses. If you have, uh, let's say, 100, then we'll construct four different QR codes that you can scan individually uh, with up to 25 um, um, recipients. And then here you can see that it was all paid. And yeah, that's it. Also, if you go to John, you'll see that in the payments section, um, the payments in h and are just basically the sum of everything you tracked here. But in USD, there's nothing yet. So now, uh, and if there's questions, uh, please ask. I'll just go through it fast because we have a lot of things to show and uh, like, let's just not spend too much time on this and, and see if there's questions uh, rising. We also have documentation for all of this. Um, in this case is the USD um, based commission report where in this case, there's two people. So, and there's also different options to pay. In this case, um, so John, does not have any commissions to be paid. He is here because he does have uh, commission agreements in dollar, but based on the list of, uh, no, based on the date period, um, there's basically no commissions to be paid. So he will not be included in, in the payment um, options. And then there's Jane who we owe 50 buck, 15 uh, bucks. So in this case, she just needs a, uh, payment method so we can do let's say paypal again um all right like this oh not again <laughs> all right so so now you have three options um one is a simple csv file which allows you to manually um you know run these um payments so one thing is that uh, it will include, so the CSV file will include the details of the default payment method. So if as a payment method you included, uh, let's say like IBAN for, um, like let's say for Euro, you can do like IBAN uh, with an IBAN and a big value, the CSV file will include that information. So it becomes really easy for you to use whatever payment processing software um, to, to process that. Um, and then in this case, WISE by email. So WISE allows you to um, also send, um, like basically it will send an email to 
all of the like people included in the CSV fail where they can collect their payments in the um, currency of choice. So it's also a pretty neat feature that some of our uh, customers are using. And then PayPal also has Payout Swap, which allow you to construct a CSV file that you can just bulk execute these payments as well. Um, Actually, so that's, I got a quick question um, sure? on this. Do the CSV exports, do those include all of the, I guess, micro commissions that you're getting um, broken up from the payment? No. So that for that, we have something else, um, but that's more like tax reporting, right? Uh, that's right. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. So uh, I can click on it. Um, actually, just like check it out. But we can quickly show the like the coin export, for example. As well. Yeah. So here, um, it's very simply like just the name. There's no other information of that contact, the amount, the currency, payment methods, and um, PayPal email. So if you have like different types of payment methods it will just add more columns to to allow you to have all the information that you you need uh, but it's just the, the amount like from the contacts perspective he's like he's getting paid from the owner of the hotspot so he doesn't necessarily need to consider when the owner of the hotspot received the rewards however there we do have the means to um, get this information, um, which is at the hotspot level. So here, uh, what you can do is you can select uh, several hotspots, and then you can click here, export hotspot rewards for the period that you're interested in. And then you can either just generate the report, which will give you, give you all the information, but you can also click here, and then it will be compatible with um, Coinly text reporting software. And then it's just a few clicks and it will generate actually. Just perfect for you get for Americans, right? Because the tax season's coming in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So it's like the it basically tells you like um this is the received amount, it's in H and T. Um, however, yeah, received amount in H and T. But then what we do is we uh, convert it based on um the um, the exchange rate at the time in dollar terms. So we do all of that as well. And we just provide you with an export. And so when you say that it exports for Coinly, that means that I don't have to go and jack around with like all of the columns to get it in the right order to- Yes, exactly. We, uh, just, cool. Yeah, just simply you upload it. Um, we actually had a call with them today and they will create a video to, um, to go over the whole process from start to end. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. There's this. And then for power users, um, there's also here the commission templates, uh, which allows you to, as I said before, like to create a, for example, like an installer fee template, which would be a one time fixed amount of 20, let's say, uh, euros. And then you click here. And even, even more so, like you can um, set a default uh, commission template. And then if you, so ideally, let's say you, you get started right now um, and you order whatever, 20 hotspots, then you basically go through the whole process of, okay, where should I actually install these hotspots? Okay, these areas are interesting. Then you add the locations uh, that you have access to. But while doing so, so when you add a location, like one thing is just adding an address, which is like if you had a Prata, I'm, I'm just staying like a random address. Um, whatever, 29 Lisbon. Okay, this one. Um, then what you can do is you can assign this to a contact. And if you do that, the moment you actually create an install for that, for a hotspot where you literally physically install a hotspot in that location and you connect the hotspot and the location, it will automatically um, um, like add a, a, a commission, which is the default commission that you set here for the contacts that were linked to that location. So once you get it, like it's quite simple and it will save you a lot of time in the future. Um, so yeah, 
but this is also explained in the, in the documentation. Um, so documentation is here, docs.faltspotty.net. And yeah, so I don't know, like payment management, you can read all of these things. And yeah, if there's any questions, we also were quite responsive um, in this course. So also we have a YouTube channel uh, that we're adding more and more content as well, like some small demos about, we had demos about different kinds of commissions. Uh, we're gonna have demos about super simulations as well. So yeah, we're trying to work on the docs, YouTube videos, and we are also always on Discord. If anyone has questions, we have community people, have the mods, they're always helping as well. Right, uh, and one more thing that I forgot is that, um, let's say you have, um, you already ran your commission report, but then, and you paid people, but then you realize, oh, I actually uh, forgot to enter the install and contact information of this one hotspot that I, you know, I didn't, the host didn't get back to me. You can then either like, because from here, when you generate the report, it's for everyone, for all your contacts. But what you can also do is you can select a particular contact and then generate a commission report for only that one or for only a selection of the contacts and then it's the same flow like what's start and end date currency time zone etc and then it will just generate one just for jane so here commission report for jane whatever uh, this period generate report and then it's processing um yeah that's uh i think that concludes the the commission um things there is a lot of work uh being put into it or that we have put into this to make it as complete as possible based on all the feedback we got from our users and um yeah we're proud of it yeah and it works yeah. great man uh the first time i think it was right after you had rolled this out um i i was able to pay all of my hosts with a single qr code and it just went flawlessly uh, it's yeah That's even, even for me for us like i used to take with hotspotty v1 we call it took me like an hour a month yeah now it takes me like 30 seconds yeah that's yeah great. and Ridiculous. in the past i remember like when i was processing them i had to do a thousand clicks literally <laughs> just to process uh payments of one month mvp mvp <laughs> we still manage 150 hotspots, right? And uh, now all that data has been input. It literally is, you know, a couple of minutes. Uh, you can obviously audit as well, all the commissions. Uh, I don't know if you want to have a, just a very quick look at that, uh, Max. So you can That's actually what? see, uh, just to, to show how you can audit the commission afterwards. Because obviously, you know, our software um, runs all of the numbers and, and everything but uh you know before you actually pay hosts you can still check to make sure that um the workings that we've uh, put together actually um are accurate but um yeah it literally takes a couple of minutes to pay you know 150 hosts so it is it super fast once everything's set up yeah, yeah I mean, that's, that's here basically like download uh raw json data and then you just get like a big file that contains all of the, basically all of the information, including, you know, the, the actual uh, agreements you had for which hotspots and all of the data we need to construct, like all of this outcome, we basically um, create a snapshot of that and we provide you uh, the, the means to download that. So that if you ever have any doubt, like, oh, this is not correct, um you can verify what's wrong because oftentimes you might be um not oftentimes but it, it does happen that um these commission agreements they're being tweaked or like dates are changed afterwards and then you look and it's like yeah this is wrong and yeah it is indeed wrong if you consider what's in the system right now but back in the time when you ran the commission report it was actually right you know and that's basically what you see here um so it's a file with all of this information. It's not a lot, like the report and then the commissions and then total amount, occurrences, like all of this information. It's not, not always, basically you, you don't really need it unless you do, and then you have the means to do it, right? Yeah, it's very technical, but it's in there. 
All right. We also get an email um, when the commission report is finished, because if you have a lot of uh, commissions um, to be processed, uh, this works asynchronously. So you can just either just wait here or just check your emails. And once it's done, you'll, you'll be able to come back here. All right. Shall we <laughs> move for the simulation part? Or... All right. Yes, yes. Okay, so this is, um, yeah, so this is like a very big, um, how can I say, like feature set that was missing in Hotspotty that was this basically planned from the beginning, from like almost like over a year and a half ago. Um, but we always focused on, um, how can I say, like, um, the bottlenecks that we identified in the ecosystem. And to us, that was um, education because HIP 17 came out, HIP 15, and there was a lot of you know, question marks around that. And people were like manually figuring all of these things out, but it's just too complex to do it manually. So we focused a lot on education, on visualization tools. And basically um, we ended up uh, uh, building like a full suite of everything you just saw and more uh, because this is just the workspace section but there's in in the map there's so much functionality already uh yeah i'm just going to refresh this page but we never got to the point of uh, completing the location assessment and the reason is also because we believe that um, simplicity is key and uh from our experience um like doing this assessment based on line of sight reflects what we did ourselves um, when we were scouting for locations and it worked very well, which is basically if you can see an open horizon, you don't see uh, many obstructions um, blocking any communication to certain areas, you'll be pretty, pretty good, you know? Um, and if you're in the middle of a valley and there's lots of um, hills around you, you will most likely not uh, go through the mountain, well, definitely not through the mountain. You might bounce, bounce around it, but uh, in the end, um, if if you use the heuristic that uh, if you can see it, uh, you'll most you'll basically connect to the hotspot. Um, we believe that that's a very simple approach that works very well, and so we wanted to do that programmatically, and it turned out to be uh, quite challenging uh, technically, which is also why we only got to release it. A, over a year later, but uh, that's what we're releasing this week, actually. So yeah. what you see here um, is um, the elevation contours, which we've had for a while. So the elevation contours, basically, for people who don't know what it means, this is a color um, like uh, 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 legends, which says which color basically connects all the dots on the map with the same um, height. Um, you can change um, the distance unit to Imperial for people from the US might require like a refresh or something. Yeah, but basically now you can see it, it's in feet. I'll just switch back because I don't really know how to think in feet terms. Um, but yeah, so here what you see is there's a massive hill um, that prevents communication between these hotspots and the city center, which is how we learn to the hard way that uh, line of sight is important. Uh, another tool that we released uh, a while ago is the like line of sight, the manual tool. So if you click, for example, here, confirm, then you go, let's say to this point, confirm it's green. And it's basically, you can see both points, it's 33 meters. So it's a bit excessive, but let's say it's 10 meters from this point, 10 meters in this point. Um, actually, there's not a clear line of sight because apparently there's a, a hill in between somewhere. Then if you actually uh, change point B to, let's say, Lisbon, which is what we targeted back then, you'll see that it's, there's basically no way unless you make this like 100 meter, even then it's just never going to reach this, uh, this destination. So what is the super simulation? So the super simulation that we are launching uh, later this week essentially um, allows you to select a location 
And then you can say, okay, I'm going to put a hotspot at whatever 10 meters height from the ground floor, uh, ground level. Then what we do is we go through all of the hotspots in the area and we run this calculation. And then we see if there's a clear line of sight or not. And then we gave, give you an overview of which exact hotspot we think you're going to hit. Um, and then that's where it starts because like you would, you would think that that's sufficient. But in, if you want to optimize for rewards, and I mean, in other words, if you actually want to help this network get better, um, that should not be enough. And that's why HIP 15 and HIP 17 are so important because they regulate the rewards you'll get um, depending on uh, which exact hotspots you're, you're, uh, you're reaching. So let me go to a super simulation. Um, I already added some here, but again, this is also experimental. We're working quite hard on this. So um, this is a location where I run a super simulation here. So uh, you click, you select the heights, and then you run a simulation. I can do that again here. Then it's going to process. You wait a bit, and then you get an email, and then you come back and you see it. So in this case, I can already uh, click on this one. Um, so based on the calculations, what you see is on the map, this is only going to see very few hotspots. So in this case, only eight, which is you know not a lot. Um, so this represents a histogram of um, all of the hotspots in the ecosystem and um, how many other hotspots they are witnessing. And then we benchmark, we basically use that as a benchmark and we see basically if it's in the bottom 25th percentile or in the top five uh, percentile. And then uh, we basically match this number into this um, histogram. And then you'll see in this case that it's uh, pretty poor as a performance. Um, here at the bottom, you can see which other hotspots you're seeing. And then this is the interesting stuff. So basically um, what we did was we looked at HIP 15, HIP 17, and what regulates how much value there is to witnessing a hotspot. And here in the table, essentially you can boil it down to two factors that are multiplied. So in this case, it's the witness reward unit, which is a function uh, of how many other hotspots are already seeing this hotspot. If there's only one other hotspot seeing this hotspot, there's still a lot of value to witnessing this hotspot. And that will reflect in a higher value here. Um, if plenty of hotspots are already seeing it, then this will be a lower value. And then the transmit scale, I'm sure you're all familiar with that. Um, that's basically you regulating the, the density of how many hotspots are in your area. And then the product of that um, is what we call the witness score. And essentially, the, all of these witness scores, you can add them up, up and then it will um, refl be reflected in a POC score, like a proof of coverage score, which is then directly comparable to existing hotspots. But we're looking at a hypothetical hotspot. And um, the reason why it's directly comparable is because all we do is we use the same me mechanics that are used for the proof of coverage um, reward system in combination with the witnesses data of the hotspots versus the location, uh, line of sight visibility data from our simulation, which then allows us to benchmark it against um, the entire um, hotspot ecosystem. Uh, which right now is like 650,000 if people are watching this later on. Um, yeah, and you can see it's a pretty poor performing uh, location. So my guess is that uh, another thing that I, I didn't say is um, the height of the recipients, so like the, the hotspots that are being seen, if there's no height specified in the blockchain, we use um, 10 meters. Uh, if there is a height specified, we just use that height, which in this case, is two meters, 15 meters, 46 meters. Um, if then you, this is pretty high, by the way. So if then you click on open LOS, we are immediately going to see uh, the same, um, same tool as we highlighted before. 
where you can see the specified 10 meters of our location against the 46 meters and then why there's actually direct line of sight. Um, so yeah, you close this, you go back. And the lines that you see here, they basically, they reflect the line of sight connections, but they also reflect the value of the connections. So in this case, it's either a red uh, value or basically a gray value. Gray means um, this hotspot is offline in this case. Gray basically means there's no value to witnessing it. And that's because um, there's a, like in the transmit scale and in, in the reward calculations, there's some kind of um, mechanic that will see how active this hotspot is. And if it's inactive for a while, it will get reduced to you know, not being- 3,600 blocks. If, it yeah. doesn't, if it's offline and didn't do anything for 3,600 like blocks. Days, I think yeah. something like that. So basically here, basically you see, you can see this, this hotspot, but you cannot count on earning anything from it right now because it's probably offline or whatever, but it can change in the future and that will impact the score. Um, and then these red ones basically mean like, yeah, there's, there is value to witnessing them, but actually not a lot because most likely a bunch of other hotspots are already witnessing it. Then what we can do is, and that's the, the interesting part for uh, people who are looking at deploying a lot of hotspots is you can, um, can essentially bulk um, simulate it. So you can um, import using CSV, a bunch of locations, and then um, you can specify the metadata, like the height at which you can install a hotspot. And then you can simply run super simulations for all of them. And then the next thing you can do is you just sort by profitability, essentially. And then you know where to prioritize your, your efforts. So in this uh, case, this is- Sorry, yeah, no, finish. So this is a, a top 6%, um, so it's pretty good. So let's check it out. So in this case, also, if you have a lot of um, you know, visibility, uh, these lines, they do slow down um, the performance of the app. If you go here and you click on witness lines, you remove them, they will still be visible because they're highlighted in the color and all the ones are gray. So that's like a kind of a performance hack. Uh, I'll just leave it for now, but this is a, just a yeah, If your computer is struggling a little bit, just turn it yeah. off. So here you can see that, uh, you know, it's not hitting these hotspots because there's clearly, um, you know, some mountains Struggle. in between the same here, right? Like these hotspots are not visible. There are hotspots hitting like hundreds of kilometers. Um, so, but of course, if there's a massive mountain in between, that will not happen. So in this case, it's apparently pretty good hotspots. There's some green ones out there, meaning these hotspots are not really seen by many other hotspots and it has a good transmit scale, some orange ones. And um, yeah, and then here you can see this is the distribution of how many hotspots having which kind of classification of the witness score. And then this is basically the combination of how many are you seeing and how valuable are they? And then the combination of that is basically it. This another uh, quite interesting thing, but it's still act in active development is the fact that um, this um, simulation is also designed to work for other locations. So what if you don't have hotspots around? You can essentially put all of your coordinates in whatever, like some rural area and then um, run simulations on all of them. And this will work even without visible hotspots. So you'll have a bunch of locations that are visible from this location and vice versa. And we calculate the equivalence of all of these scores for these locations. Um, yeah, so that you can essentially do a greenfield deployment in an area that really, really needs the coverage versus I mean, like existing cities. Yeah, one thing this uh, can you go down a little bit uh, mm -hmm. on the chart? So the one small thing, one small detail that uh, those those charts, those bars, they're not percents, uh, they're percentile. Uh, if you remember a little bit of the uh, probability and statistic classes. Um, so it's a little bit different than just the percent. 
But the idea of this, like, you don't necessarily need to go all technical. Like, of course, Max is, we, we're doing this demo to, to show how things work. But basically, all you need to know, uh, it's like the number of Vispa hotspots and your POC score. If it's the a POC good POC score, score is all you need to know, essentially. You yeah. don't need to care. If, you, if you're not technical, you don't really care. You just want to assess. Look at this. There's some other simulations with a different height and see if you can actually install it, right? Like if you have access to the top floor versus the first floor, you can make the, check the difference here. You'll see the POC score is most likely going to be better, but maybe it's not worth the effort. It's up to you to decide. Um, but at least you, you can get a better feel for it. Um, yeah. And also, this is uh, still in the works, but um, we're providing statistics across the network for um, like, what was it, like the POC score, uh, the witness scores, the transmit scales, developed witnesses. So you can have a better feel of like what to expect across the network. Um, yeah, we're, we're still going to change this. So I, I don't want to focus too much uh, on that, but, um, but yeah. That's, yeah, working, uh, working on the simulations, we had to add a lot of new, let's say, tables to the ETL uh, to process a lot of new things. So then we just let them be available as well uh, for the like the statistics and all. So yeah, so I guess this is the super simulation. Um, it's still a work in progress, but I think we're very close from, from releasing it. And we're super excited. And from what we noticed, like, like Max said in the beginning, line of sight and RF simulations, they don't defer. I, to be honest, if a 3DBI hot antenna can go pretty far, as we know. So I don't, don't think like it's a different way of thinking. And I think it makes a lot of sense, at least on our experiments and our backgrounds. Yeah, another, another thing uh, in favor of this is that you only need to consider the height. Uh, like you don't have to think about what's the frequency I'm operating on? What is the terrain uh, type? Is it suburban? Is it whatever? Um, what kind of antenna do I have? Like, what do I know? Like, if you're just getting started, you don't want to dive into all of these details unnecessarily. You just want to get a rough idea of, you know, if it makes sense or not. But also, I guess the people uh, that uh, perhaps aren't as technical, but um, the law of standard, the, the propagation is very good, right? It's a uh, very low frequency. So if you have got good height, the idea is that it is highly likely to, um, you know, to witness other hotspots that have also got a reasonable height. So the RF stuff um, uh, is obviously a different approach to uh, some other tools that, that are out there that uses uh, RF. However, we think that uh, using you know, elevation and elevation profiles is uh, also a pretty uh, smart way of doing it because of uh, you know, how LoRa works. So yeah, it's a different approach, but we think it's going to be a, you know, a new and exciting one. I've got a question about the LOS, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, is it possible to uh, have it scale? So essentially when you're zooming in to do kind of like a micro measurement, um, it auto, you know, uses two kilometers and, and shifts you way off to the right. Is there a way that you guys could have that auto scale in the future? Like I saw your question, I didn't really understand, like maybe. So you want me to do a, you mean this one or? Oh, when you click confirm and then go to the next one. Can you elaborate please? Um, I think when you up. click, you mean when you click confirm the first one, it shifts two kilometers, is that what you're saying? Right. So on a micro scale, I mean, if you're zooming in and you're trying to maybe navigate, uh, if you, I, I yeah. know, you know, kilometer scale as well, but really, really small. If you're zoomed in, you're trying to measure between two hotspots, for instance, to make sure you're not 300 meters. If you uh, click okay, the okay. first one and you click the, if you go to click, yeah, I got it, it. it shoots you way far over. Yeah. So yeah, put, yeah, put, yeah. put location A and zoom a lot, right? So, so basically what, what you're saying is here, yeah. if it's, let's say if it's less than one kilometer to show it in, in like meters, something like that. Ah, we do that. We already well, do that. Zoom in and click uh, the first yeah, you gotta start again. No, he, he means that after you click the, the A, the B is gonna be too far if you're zoomed in. Like two kilometers too, too wide uh, when we're zoomed in, it, get, it gets out of the map. Okay, wait, wait. 
So <laughs> just trying to get it right. So I click here and then now it's going, uh, that's what you mean. Yeah. That yeah I think it's not a massive like, problem, right? Thing is, we don't really um, have the data, the contextual data to know, I think, how much we're zoomed. Actually, we do, but I, I don't know exactly. Yeah, I think it would add a little bit of complexity. I mean, we, we can we can add in the feedback a website and get that. It's definitely not going to be our priority right now, but I, I feel you. Uh, there's something that we can improve for sure. Yeah, it was just a small thing that as I'm doing simulations for myself, I found myself having to you know, keep shifting over and over and over when I'm just measuring between, you know, if I'm going to put it at this house or that house and things like that. So. Oh, it's super simulation that we don't need to do that anymore, right? We can just run the simulations on the locations and should do most of the job. Um, any more questions regarding this? Otherwise, we can pass. I don't, I don't know. We don't have a lot of time, right, Travis? Take all the time you need. We got plenty of time. <laughs> all right. I could click on the price if you want, but I don't know if you, Alexis wants to highlight you something. Want, or... Yeah, did you want to touch on um, the mobile app? I know we weren't going to demo it, but perhaps we can just... Uh, there's a couple of things that are up and coming, right? And, and uh, perhaps the mobile app and the host dashboard we could just talk about. But not yeah, demo. we we we're releasing our own hotspot app for Android and iOS. Uh, both are at the... Apple and Google Mercy right now, just waiting for them to approve uh, the app. So we're gonna have it's gonna be like a beta app. Uh, our current app, we do, you don't really uh, it, you're gonna be able to see all the information that you have on your hotspots. Right now, you, you're not gonna be able to manage the things like you have on the webs on the website. Also, just a quick reminder that our website is mobile friendly. Everything that you can do on the website, you can also do on the on the on the browser, on the phone. Um, but the idea is that the web app, the, sorry, the mobile app is going to get better and better. We want to add more notifications. Uh, one thing that you can already do now is to like change the Wi-Fi password, run diagnostics, everything that we had before on the Helium app as well. And soon we can add more, we're going to add like the makers and you can onboard hotspots and all that, all that jazz uh, that's coming up pretty soon. Yeah, and the onboarding um, of hotspots will be also um, quite interesting because it will kind of bootstrap you with with locations and whatever installs so that it will ma make it a lot easier to go through the whole flow of managing your hotspots. It's not just like here you are, uh, it's on chain. It's, it's going to assist you to already input some information um, like through the app. Um, yeah, I mean, we're very excited. We will probably sh shoot some tweets and more information about it very, about it very soon. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to, to point that the mobile is coming. And now I guess we can just talk really quickly about the pricing that we, and we, we announced the first pricing and then we rolled back and like start from scratch. Uh, you know, first time is a charm, like, th like let's say second charm, hopefully it's going to be a charm, not the third one. But hopefully, if you guys have any questions about the pricing, I guess Alexis can run a quick example. Yeah, maybe I can share my screen. Um, see my screen, yeah. Um, so yeah, I thought just before we go into the pricing, uh, I just wanted to um, show people a few things. Um, obviously, we went uh, straight into the commission stuff uh, and demoed that and the super simulations, etc. But for anyone who is perhaps a little bit less familiar with Hotspot, even though we've been around for quite some time now, I just wanted to very briefly go over um, basically our feature set, just super, super fast. Um, we've spent quite a bit of time updating our site. Um, Hotspot, you know, we, uh, we plug it as your all-in-one tool for, for building the Helium network. And broadly speaking, we have sort of five category areas. So there's, you know, understand the Hotspot data, so, you know, easily visualize and completely understand all the Helium hotspot data on one platform. So we've got a lot of, a lot of analytics. Understanding, you know, Helium, it can take a little bit of time to get your head around. And we do uh, a pretty good job of uh, presenting that data. So there's that. There's uh, optimizing hotspot locations. Obviously, we've just showed you the, you know, the super simulations, but we uh, have quite a lot of other analytical tools that assist you to, to do that. 
Um, and then you've got the monitoring and, and managing. So you can uh, monitor uh, and manage all of your hotspots in, in one place, including notifications. So when hotspots go offline, et cetera, and, on, uh, and come online. Um, and then we've got uh, two different types of uh, collaboration. So there's a collaboration with your team. Um, you can have uh, multiple workspaces. Perhaps I'll go into that in, 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 a, in a moment uh, with regards to the pricing. Um, as well as uh, invite uh, team members to collaborate on the same data. You know, perhaps if you've only got five or 10 hotspots uh, that, you know, you don't necessarily need that. But when you start managing, you know, a larger fleet of hotspots, um, working with different people with different skill sets to do that is helpful. Um, and then we've also got collaboration with the community where you can um, register your uh, or verify your your wallet and the, all of the associated hotspots and collaborate and communicate with other uh, willing hotspot owners. And then uh, last but not least, it's obviously the, the managing and automating the payouts, which we, we touched on today. So yeah, uh, that's just at hotspotty.net. You can uh, view that under the features. So we've got those five main areas. So for example, understand your, your data, you know, we've got all of the features uh, of that category. So there's that, uh, the pricing we'll move on to just a moment. We also have launched uh, professional services as well. So some people um, are already, you know, familiar with Hotspotty or they're, you know, they're happy to learn by themselves. It's relatively intuitive. Some of the, uh, we, we have the documentation as we just discussed, but uh, if anyone wants to uh, uh, get started perhaps a bit more quickly or they've got a larger deployment of uh, hotspots or assessing locations, you can purchase uh, um, the professional service packages from us. Um, and then under yeah, the learn, so we've got the documentation, which we've touched on. I think Max uh, um, showed you that a little bit. Uh, we also have a, an academy program, which is uh, which we've uh, just launched uh, recently, which allows uh, any um, uh, Helium users that are uh, uh, interested in uh, getting a, to become basically hotspot certified professional so they can provide our services on behalf of, uh, of us to, to other to other users so you can simply register there um, Rafael who I think is also on this call uh, looks after all of the, uh, the sales uh, side of things um, so yeah you can simply just register here you know put, fill in your details submit and we'll get back to you um, obviously, we have a blog, and then yeah, there's the feedback which everybody uh, we would just we push people to submit feedback. Um, we encourage people to do that. We we we've got a lot of feedback. You know, we've had like, over 200 feature requests, some bug reports, etc. And uh, people can also upvote certain feature requests, etc. So uh, there's that. Um, and then yeah, you can collaborate with us on our Discord. So just hotspotty.net forward slash Discord. Um, and last but not least, uh, you can request a demo. So uh, if you'd uh, like a personalized demo, you can complete that, that here. So with all of that being said, I'll jump into the, the new pricing structure. Um, we've pretty much got three, well, we've actually got four plans, but three, uh, two paid for plans. So we've got the, the community plan, which is, uh, which is free. So yeah, so, uh, here you see we have, we've got uh, four plans. Um, we can you can compare those plans here because there's quite a lot uh, of uh, features in each one of those categories, like I was discussing. So you can see all of the features under visualize and understand, under planning and optimizing, under monitoring notifications and management, the team collaboration, community collaboration, um, and advanced commission tracking. We still need to update that advanced commission tracking a bit more for the new features that we've uh, we've released. But you can see that it's quite extensive. There's a lot of features there. But this helps you to to understand relatively quickly what's included in in which package. So yeah, the community is uh, starts off for uh, you know just a zero dollars. It's free. Uh, Pro is five dollars per month, and business is twenty five. This is the base uh, price, and then you need to add you know, hotspots that you'll uh, uh, monitor and manage uh, and uh, super simulations, which we have discussed. So I'll just go back to uh, the pricing. So, yeah, so basically you choose the plan that you want. So you assess what features are in each each plan. Um, and, uh, and then when you click on the pro, 
you you just add the amount of uh, hotspots that you want to manage and the amount of simulations that you want to simulate and uh, it will automatically work out the price for you so i don't know let's say we just want 10 hotspots if you're uh, on the pro plan that will uh, cost you a total of uh, ten dollars so it's the the hotspotty pro price is five dollars plus uh, the the five dollars to, to manage those uh, additional uh, 10 hotspots um, you can actually see the breakdown of the uh, uh, pricing for the hotspots uh, so you know we go from uh, one all the way up to sort of 500 plus if you uh, we have made it pretty competitive if you are purchasing in bulk so for example one to ten hotspots is uh, you know 50 cents per hotspot but if you go above 10 it goes down to 40 cents and it goes down all the way to, to 15 cents if you're above uh, 500 hotspots and we have a sim similar discount structure um, on the uh, the super simulations on the right hand side there so yeah that that pricing will be going live on uh, the 2nd of april which is uh, this weekend oh, um, sorry ben you're gonna yeah i'm just saying one thing uh, if you if you sit go down a little bit mm -hmm. there is uh, on top of the high pricing table what we're doing we calculate the average uh, hotspot earning for the entire network. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and then we have an idea like how much that average hotspot is making per month. So you can, can say that with 10 hotspots, our pricing, uh, 10 hotspots make an average $808 a month. Uh, so like the, the pricing they were charging is like less than 1% of that, just to put things into perspective. Yeah, I think we, we ran quite a lot of the numbers and it was around half a percent of the fleet. Um, Obviously, and but having said that, I think the types of customers that will be using Hotspotty are probably the ones that are perhaps uh, have got better installs. Uh, that isn't necessarily the case because Hotspotty is for all kinds of users, but um, that value will probably you know, probably be even more competitive in, in that respect. Yeah. Yeah. If you optimize your hotspots well, you're not necessarily going to have the average rate. Right? Maybe you can also touch on the, the locations. Um... Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, so we, uh, for each hotspot and simulation, we provide um, two locations and the locations are quite a prominent feature uh, within Hotspotty. Um, like initially we had only added one location, but because we, it, they appear in, like we basically have different types of um, simulations. So we do simulations for um, transmit scale and uh, we also have a you require a, a location um, for adding an install so we wanted to make sure that um, there was plenty of uh, locations for for users to use and they didn't feel like they ran out of them uh, we got a lot of feedback regarding that and we felt that uh, we had to you know up that to make it fair and make people feel feel comfortable with the pricing and also so they could kind of understand it it was getting too complex potentially minimize the locations a little bit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I, I like the new pricing. Uh, we got a lot of compliment and I think comparing to the first one that we offered, uh, this is a little bit more clear. In terms of the community plan, so what you basically get there is apart from the feature um, features set that is slightly different, most of the features you get as well in the community plan, but the biggest difference is you can have at max uh, one hotspot, one simulation and two locations. So one simulation is basically one simulation per month. You can do one every month. And, but if you do want to track multiple hotspots, you do need to upgrade to base plan. And then you can basically add hotspots. Yeah. Easy. And I think the price is pretty good. So look at there, like 50 hotspots, you're going to be paying 0.37% on average reward of a hotspot for the monthly plan. I don't want to see any complaints. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, we are going to continue to add features to Hotspotty. Um, as much as, uh, you know, we, we are pivoting from, you know, beta to a premium uh, model, uh, the Hotspotty team really does love, you know, the Helium um, project and the helium community uh, obviously we've we've added uh, quite a lot of utility to the the network for for a long time 
Uh, we've had our challenges because I think we've got, we're up to perhaps 180,000 users now and often have thousands of simultaneous users, etc. So um, what we, I probably should add is that uh, the performance um, will improve significantly um, at the beginning of, of April. Um, yeah. Primarily because there's not going to be so many uh, people uh, hitting our, uh, our infrastructure. Um, so, you know, paying customers will uh, will see a significant improvement to uh, to the performance. I think I saw a comment uh, asking about yeah, that. We had people with, they had like 500 wallets and 20,000 hotspots in the workspace. <laughs> yeah. uh, but also with like more money coming in now, we'll be able to also add more servers if needed. We already have like plenty of beefy servers to hand to handle the, the current load of the, the people who are like destroying our servers. I think it's a, a similar issue that Helium has with the API, like someone hitting <laughs> 10,000 requests a second, right? Um, but I think now with, with billing, things are going to be a little bit more controlled. Uh, I didn't want to invest more, let's say, resources on the infrastructure before billing goes live because of, I knew that once that happens, um, things are going to get a little bit better. And if it doesn't, then I, I will, okay, let's just, you know, put more, more beasts to run this. Uh, I think one thing that is important for us to say is like before the, the second of second of April goes live with the billing, we suggest the people that have their workspaces to start actually cleaning up the workspaces in, in a way that it's going to be for actually what they're going to use. Uh, a lot of people are just following like a bunch of wallets, just track random wallets, uh, which you can, but you have to pay for that in this case, right? Uh, we also implemented a way to delete workspaces. So if you have a lot of workspaces that you don't want to use for some reason, so you can just go ahead and delete them and then start cleaning up your workspace and your work environment before switching to, to, to the billing. Yeah. But one thing I will say though, is when you were showing this demo, you were kind of flying around pretty quickly when you're, when I'm at least sitting down in front of it and using it. Um, I really haven't noticed severe lag uh, using the application uh, for what I'm doing. Thanks. I mean, we did put a lot of effort over the past months and, and improving and uh, like performance improvements. It's not like one toggle you need to switch. It's a, it's a call. It's basically compound return of a lot of small efforts and many different things. So yeah, we did do a lot of efforts, which is why it's a lot smoother now than it was a few months ago. There was a time I think that you mentioned was, um, how if you calculate line of sight between two points, then that can be reused um, uh, in other calculations, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I, like every time someone adds a new location to the, to the system, automatically we start calculating all the points around that to try to increase the speed. So uh, let's say you, added, you start a new simulation it's going to see what are the calculations that are already done and just see the difference of the points that I still don't have in the database and then I'm going to calculate. So uh, our system is 100% of the time calculating locations and save them to like a database that have all the points with different altitudes and because and, we try to do as fast as we can uh, to run them. So yeah, that's why we're going to try to, to improve because if you start a new fresh uh, Simulation, it can take like five minutes, depending on the amount of hotspots you have around it. But if we pre-calculated, let's say 90%, and then when you run a simulation again, it's only going to calculate for the remaining 10%. So that can take like 30 seconds, maybe. Um, so one thing yeah. that Max was showing about the, the, the speed of the website that people say, if you, depending on your computer, right? Because like Max is running on the MacBook M1 Pro Max, ultra whatever they have. So if you add all of the, the extra toggles, uh, depending on your computer, it's gonna depend on your computer setup, right? Uh, but there are ways that we can do that to like, stop looking of the hexes, all the hexagons, uh, disable the too close to witness, start only showing hotspots that are online and offline in your map. Those are the things that actually gonna increase the performance on your computer. Um, 
we already, like he mentioned, we spent a lot of time on performance improvements already and being able to disable the things so that your computer can breathe a little bit better. Um, it's the best we can do right now. I, I like to think, for example, Hotspot as being like Photoshop for Helium. You can't have like a really, really old computer and expect Photoshop to run smoothly, right? Uh, so, so just optimize great. your hotspots and buy a better computer, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, I think, uh, Sean, uh, do you have your hand up? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, so earlier in the call, you showed collaborating with a host. You showed that um, I, I wasn't right in front of my system then, but you showed how you can send something to a host and they can look up their earnings, right? That does not count toward the number of uh, teammates you're collaborating with in a subscription, correct? No, yeah. it does not. Yeah. It's, okay. Independent. Sorry. Okay, good. Yeah. You're referring to the host, yeah, the host dashboard, the host login, right? Yeah, host dashboard, thanks. That's I, mean, I, that, but I plan to. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah that's, um, that's not, that doesn't use up your um, team members, Nate. No. That's basically contact, and there's no limit in how many contacts you, you upload or use. Thanks. So team members are here, and you can basically only the business plan, you can allow uh, team members to be added, and up to 10, basically. But they don't really impact how many, like the plan doesn't impact how many contacts you can, you can upload. OK, thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, and regarding the performance improvements, so for example, I can show you, okay, it's still processing. Um, but one of the things that actually uh, does take up a lot of like processing is um, calculating the transmit scales. So um, by, that is why by default, the online status is the one that's loaded um, because that doesn't, we basically toggle off all of these um, calculations and the moment you click on a hotspot and then you actually click on reward scaling, then we will do all the calculations, um, but only when strictly necessary. And by default, it's not strictly rest necessary. The moment you change it here uh, to like simulated transmit scale, it will do all the cal cal uh, calculations. And of course, if you're in New York or something where there's like a place with 10, 15,000 hotspots, on a moderate computer, um, it will definitely slow things down. So these are the small tweaks, tweaks that we identified and did. It's just toggling off um, the computations that are not really necessary. Another one is um, um, witness lines. So if you click on a hotspot, actually, let me just um, sort by a number of valid witnesses. So this one has 219. If you click on witnesses, uh, click here, then um, basically I can show the lines. Actually, it should show the lines. Okay, apparently there's a bug in code which happens. But this uh, this basically should show all of the lines and it does not. But when it does, uh, does show the lines, then it's definitely taking up uh, processing power because it needs to calculate all of these coordinates and draw a line. Um, and yeah, so we recommend, especially with the super, super simulations, to actually uh, do toggle this off if your computer might not be able to process it. And you will notice it. When you're showing a super simulation and there's a clear lag, it will most likely be caused by, by that. Um, so I think I'm wrong. I mean, there was, a, there was a time that by the full was uh, the the reward scale calculations, everything was done in the browser. And that was the time that we got a lot of complaints from people that the website was super slow. Here, so you can see, right? I'm trying to zoom out. This one, I just put it ridiculously high, like 50 meters on top of a hill, <laughs> 1,200 visible hotspots. And yeah, so clearly a, a good performer, but it does slow down, I can barely, zoom out um, so what in this case you should do is to just click here and then you toggle this off and go back and now it's smooth yeah yeah 
just want to highlight that. Pretty good location, though. Let's do it. I've got a quick uh, question or clarification, I guess, about the billing process. Uh, because that's kicking in here in what, a day and a half, two days, um, if if someone misses that deadline, but they do, you know they do want to get an account or they want to upgrade that, uh, what status does it throw the account into uh, during that time? Um, it's um, basically um, you become like your workspace will become a community workspace, so you will not like lose your data. Like you will still um, have, let's say here eight hotspots but then you will only see one and there will be a clear like banner saying, hey, it looks like you don't have enough um, you know, hotspots in your account, click gotcha. here to, uh, to upgrade. And then uh, Daniel was talking about how you can delete the workspace. So I'm just gonna create a test one. I'll just add a hotspot like yellow, just randomly adding one. Cool. So I can just go to the settings of the workspace, ensure that you're in the right work workspace. In the danger zone, which is new, you can now click on delete the workspace. Uh, we cannot re revert this. This is a disclaimer, <laughs> but basically you can just delete the workspace. You're logged out. Um, if you log in, it's no longer going to be there, basically. Gotcha. So, yeah. Now, um, if it you know kind of whittles me down to just show in one hotspot, do I get to choose which one that is? If I no, no, it's okay. completely <laughs> random. Of course, <laughs> it's gonna be the least interesting one. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a... yeah, but that yeah, that's the that's what we're trying to to accomplish. Like, and then you, you can just upgrade to the plan or. Starting like delete that workspace to start one with the plan. Uh, that's why we, we're trying to like okay, let's start already planning around what you want to use to just make the transition a bit easier, right? Yeah. Another thing important is that um, there's basically only one community. So right now you can have an unlimited workspaces. The plans, the pricing is at the level of the workspace, but you can only have one community workspace. Otherwise, people could just like cheat right like they can stack up the one hotspot workspace workspaces until they have um, you know as many workspa workspaces as they need um, but to prevent that we basically will not not allow you to have multiple free workspaces um, but right now there are people with multiple workspaces so that is actually that's what the, the migration guide is telling you is you should actually go through them and delete what's necessary or migrate. We have export functionalities in even the hotspots. Um, I mean, adding a hotspot is really simple. It's just a matter of you know, adding the wallets and it's fairly straightforward. But if you do want to do a, one last export, you can, uh, you can basically do it like this. Um, and that's, that goes with all of your data. So. Um, so in that sense, we did make it as easy as possible to, uh, for people to opt out if they, they want to, um, or just migrate their data into just one workspace and start paying for that. But also, I was just also going to add that um, the community plan is essentially a, a sort of permanent uh, free trial in that respect, right? Uh, it is slightly, it's obviously limited by the, you know, the amount of spots and locations. But in terms of the features, actually, it's quite extensive. So you can get, you can um, use the community plan to test um, parts body pretty well. The the features that aren't included are usually uh, are a bit higher end, you know. Um, so aren't typical for hotspot deployers of perhaps five or ten hotspots, you know. But um, yeah, you so you can use the the community plan to to try out parts body still yeah yeah we intentionally made it in the second iteration as affordable as possible for like the novice up to large deployers because we realized that um, having everyone still using hotspotty allows collaborative planning and efforts and like a city you can only 
um, like truly optimized for it if you're working together, which is what this platform you know was started with, you know, providing the tools to do that. And we don't want to change that. Um, and yeah, that's, that's basically it. And I always ask you guys about this, but um, the Discord integration, just what, two days ago, um, someone in the automatically created Discord channel for kind of my area, my neighborhood around here, uh, someone said, hey, I just moved here. I just got a hotspot. I'm like, ah, oh, that's cool. Uh, if you're not that's familiar awesome. with it, uh, the Discord uh, communication and kind of teamwork uh, uh, functionality is very cool. Yeah, this is this one, right? Discord collaboration, discuss in Discord. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we, we have about, we have around 7% of the network verified. So it's not insignificant, but at the same time, we'd like to work on uh, getting more people to collaborate. Um, we've got so many features uh, that, you know, promoting some over another is a, you know, a little bit of a challenge still. But um, yeah, we want to do what we can to get people to verify their wallet so that people can, you know, collaborate and make a better network together, right? Which is a big part of, that was actually what our, one of our original features and um, in, in Hotspotty um, that's still used quite a lot. You know, a lot of people still uh, send private messages to each other and, um, and, and collaborate on Discord like you were, you were talking about. I think, yeah, Max, you're showing off the time travel. Uh, yeah, it's like basically educating, you know, the, showing the trend. <laughs> yeah. Um. Lisbon used to be such a pretty city. Yeah, no, it's all red. <laughs> if you look <laughs> at the right, uh... ah, yeah, simulated. Yeah. Oh, this was actually really cool recently. So I, um, so I identified. Um, I don't know if I have screenshots still. Basically, in terms of reward scaling, this one was at zero point twenty five. So the whole area was zero point twenty five or less, and they were like whatever. 750 too many and uh, I posted it in, in the discord and because what this basically was saying was it just needed uh, three more hotspots in neighbor E which is this one and then this whole thing would basically be um, drastically improved and it happened somebody did it and or some people collaborated and now this whole like area is slightly yeah, higher <laughs> <for right>. like <laughs> that. It was went from to like 0 0.23 or something to point, almost 0 0.5. Yeah, it's a massive improvement. Actually, I made a video. Box, you know, when mm -hmm. Max says, hey, you, you folks need to move these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I could show you. I made a video, like a Loom video showing like what needs to be done and uh, people took my word for it. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's basically what we, what we did. What you love doing is providing people the tools to to come to this conclusion themselves um and yeah it's been working pretty well i think do we have any other questions from anyone no uh, rafael has been assisting us answering all the questions on the uh, on the, the chat, chat. Well, I thank you all very much for coming on and demoing these uh, new features. Uh, this Thanks is for having us. For anyone it, who isn't familiar with Hotspotty, um, they only touched on the feature set, really, that, um, that this software does. And some of what you were doing there at the end on kind of evaluating, uh, you know, areas for uh, rolling your hotspots out and, and uh, there's a lot of information that they make it very easy to, um, you know, kind of play around with. So uh, check out the videos, check out the documentation that they have, play around with it. And it's it's just, it's the best software out there for human. <laughs> you folks Thanks, have got a big up job. It's, uh, this is fantastic. Thanks, Price. 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 <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, we really appreciate it. It's been, it's been a wild journey. Uh, we learned so much doing this project as well. Just the line of sight alone. Uh, we learned so much about like NASA data sets and then trying to interpret things. It's been pretty cool. That's what I like to do as an engineer, right? Just like 
get hard hard problems to solve, and that's what we do. Oh, I, uh, I've got a question. Maybe a uh, maybe a feature request. Maybe a question. Have you put any thought into obtaining um, obtaining sites for five G for for cell phone towers or some some five yeah. G side? Okay. That's definitely in our uh, roadmap to yeah. start. Okay. Once we once we we're done with most of the there our current roadmap, very soon we're going to start implementing uh, tools to assess on the five G simulation. I don't know about simulation, but like assessing five uh, G locations as well, because that's a total different uh, game, right? Mm -hmm. Right, uh, right, different data set. Yeah, my interest is not outdoor five G like many, but indoor. But if uh, I'm considering an office building, you know, let's say a waiting room, if it's a block away from a high powered tower, I won't even investigate that that building. So that's my interest. Uh, yeah. Outdoor sites on indoor on behalf of the outdoor simulation. Yeah, we have a we we have. I wouldn't say necessarily. Well, I guess perhaps a bit superficially discussed it, and uh, there's obviously some makers. There's there's more makers that are entering the five G. You know, side uh, obviously Freedom Fire. You know, the first ones. So we've been chatting to them a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think the it's important that there's a, like a high amount of traffic, right? And it's underrepresented. You know, like just very sort of high level. That is what you need. But yeah, yeah. finding that data set and delivering it on hot spotty so people can just a bit like elevation contours, right? You know, like you turn that on and you see you can very quite quickly, you know, move around a large area and identify areas that would be good to place hotspots. So, you know, it, we need something like that, right? Uh, to identify areas that have got a lot of traffic that is underserved. So, but that definitely, yeah, it's certainly on our roadmap. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Well, I guess that's it for everything. Switch from energy drinks to beer now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, thanks for having us, Travis. We always enjoy uh, being on on Helium Hacks, and uh, it's all. And we, we actually recognise quite a lot of people uh, in this chat. So uh, you know, thanks for uh, for uh, uh, listening to us for the last uh, hour and a half. And uh, obviously, you can always catch us on our Discord as well, and uh, on Twitter, on YouTube, etc. So we're pretty active. In all of these areas, so we like hearing from people in the community. Yeah, uh, we love having you on the show. You're always welcome over here, even if it's not talking about your software. You know, you just want to come in, kind of hang out, and uh, bullshit about helium a, a little bit. Uh, it's always great seeing you, team. All right, um, nap time. <laughs>